Hello and hold tight for an eight race bonanza here on Channel 4 Racing today. We're live today at Haydock, we're live at Utoxeter, we'll be going to Goran Park in Ireland in a few minutes time, but we're live here at Wincanton in Somerset for their richest ever race day. Over £200,000 in prize money and contenders for both the Champion Hurdle and the Cheltenham Gold Cup running today. It's a perfect day, the ground is riding good, good to soft in places. This is how it looks on Channel 4 Racing for the next two hours. Four meetings, eight races in all, the four from Wincanton, Utox to Haydock, and Gorham Park, the two o'clock. Now, we're going to delay our 2.05 here at Wincanton just for a few minutes because we want to go and see the return of Kicking King, the former winner of the Cheltenham Gold Cup in 2005. He's on the comeback trail, and literally in a few seconds, we'll be going for the return of the King in the Red Mills, the two o'clock at Gorham Park in Ireland. This is the live shots, this is how they bear. And it's a cracking good race, there's just the five runners, but five very good ones, certainly four top notches. Kicking King is odds on, he is 10 to 11. Justified is next best 11 to 4, High Claw 11 to 2, Night Legend 6 to 1. The race started just a few seconds ago. Let's show on the commentary of Des Scarl. White flag is raised, and they're up. As they make the run towards the first of the 14, Night Legend is the leader from Balance Draw in second. They're followed by Kicking King, Justified, and the back marker is High Cloy. As they make their way on now towards fence number two, Night Legend is the leader from Balance Draw in second. Kicking King a couple of lengths back in third with High Cloy and Justified next. As they make the turn now and head towards fence number three. Night Legend the leader, followed by Ballastraw second, a couple of lengths to Kicking King with Hoy Cloy and Justified next as they go towards fence number three. Night Legend over, a couple of lengths in front, Ballastraw second, Kicking King's running third with Justified next on the outside of Hoy Cloy. Got a good run across now before they'll make the entrance to the straight where they'll face up to fences four, five and six. Night Legend opening up a lead now of about half a dozen lengths. Ballastraw is second with Kicking King in third and they're followed by Hoy Cloy and Justified on the outside as they begin now to make the swing into the straight. Three fences to bring them up towards the stands and it's Knight Legend who's out in front followed in second place by Ballastraw on the inside Kicking King then Justified and Hoy Cloy is the back marker as they come now towards the first in the straight. Night Legend over and clear. Kicking King is now moved up on the outside of Ballastraw. Justified racing wide of them. And the back mark of the quintet is Hoy Cloy. On their way now to fence number six, which will be the last one next time. And Night Legend and Andrew Lee comes to the fence in front of the stands with a clear advantage over Kicking King in second. In third, Ballastraw, followed by Justified and Hoy Cloy. So they pass the winning post now in the Red Mills chase and Night Legend is 10 lengths clear, followed in second place by Kicking King, Ballast draws third, then Justified and Hoy Cloy, heading into the turn taking them away from the stands towards the halfway point and out in front is Night Legend from Kicking King, third is Ballast draw, then Justified and Hoy Cloy racing together. Heading down the back straight now, eight fences left to jump. And Night Legend continues out in front of Kicking King second. The other three runners tightly grouped together. Ballast, Straw, Justified and Hoy Cloy. Reaching the first of the fences down the back. Number seven this time. And it is Night Legend out in front. Over this one from Kicking King, Ballast, Straw, Justified and Hoy Cloy. They race now towards the next, another ditch. Night Legend still out in front, Kicking King, Ballastraw, High Cloy and Justified as they clear that one and continue on down the far side now with less than a mile left to go. Six left to jump, Night Legend out in front, Kicking King second, Ballastraw third, Justified and High Cloy next as they clear that fence and now race towards the end of the back and Justified has fallen, Justified down there, Davy Russell very quickly to his feet as Justified gallops away. So now there's four left. Night Legend from Kicking King. Hoy Cloy on the outside of Ballastraw as they turn now and race to 
the fourth last fence. Knight Legend is the leader out in front of Kicking King, Ballastraw and Hoy Cloy. Four left to jump, long run after this one to the turn in. And Knight Legend is out clear. Kicking King, Ballastraw and Hoy Cloy. Turning now to race towards the final half mile as they begin the long run towards the home straight. And Knight Legend been in front from the drop of the flag is out clear of Kicking King. Racing now on the approach to the straight. Good run to the turn in with three left to jump when they swing in. And Knight Legend and Andrew Lee out in front of Kicking King and Barry Garrity with Bella Straw being followed then by Hoy Cloy as they round the home turn now. Knight Legend clear of Kicking King, Bella Straw and Hoy Cloy, the back marker of the four. Into the straight with three left to jump now. Knight Legend continuing clear as they come towards the third last. It's Knight Legend over and clear of Kicking King, Ballastraw and Hoy Cloy coming down to two out now. Knight Legend is still out there clear of Kicking King, Ballastraw and Hoy Cloy. As they jump this one, Ballastraw has moved into second in pursuit of the long time leader. Kicking King under pressure in third. Hoy Cloy for the final fence now and Knight Legend over in front. Ballastraw made a mistake trying to make ground the near side. And now Ballastraw and Andrew McNamara have eased to the front as they come up towards the finish. Ballastraw and Andrew McNamara win the Red Mills. Second home, brave effort from Knight Legend, but Kicking King a well-beaten third ahead of Hoy Cloy, who's fourth. A 33 to 1 shock in the big race at Goran and a very disappointing uh, Kicking King. We'll bring you more about that in a few moments. We're just about ready to start our first live race here at Wincant in the 205, the Bathwick Tyres Taunton Handicap Chase. First prize of just under £10,000. Confirming the non runner is number five, Pretty Star. And number two is now ridden by Chocolate Thornton. Tom Siddle not here. Cal Duas is going to start favourite. And if he wins, it's the 100 up for the champion trainer, Paul Nichols. Ligio de Rouge is next best at 3 to 1. Kenzo in his 11 to 2 shot. Double Dizzy is 13 to 2. Mandingo Chief 7s. Pedros Brief is on the drift as well out to 10s. Free Grift out to 16s. And Cherry Door also 16 to 1. So this race over 2 miles and 5 furlongs. John Frankham is with me. John, your first initial reaction on Kicking King? Ah, well, really disappointing, but we've seen it time and time again, Derek, with horses bouncing after they've been uh, off for a long time. Um, I was even allowing for that even he was disappointing you know the winner came from a long way back but uh, Tom Tom Taff will have to go back home and have a good thing but I doubt whether we'll see much out in March let's confirm the SP the winner was returned at 33 to 1 and didn't he win well well ridden by Andrew McNamara and Ballastraw confirmed number five second number four night legend at six to one and third number six kicking king 10 to 11 favorite all the reaction to that coming soon right after our 205 simon holt is our commentator here today and paul nichols very much the man in form he was our guest on the morning line 15 wins in the past two weeks that's more than any other trainer cal do us the favorite let's join simon holt for the call they're coming in they're off racing kenzo straight into an early lead often makes the running free running type kenzo from in second, uh, Mandingo Chief, then free gift back in third, going quite a good gallop towards fence number one. And Kenzo will lift off in front here under Charlie Star jumps it very well indeed from Mandingo Chief and free gift. Uh, Cal Duas towards the outside in the pink and darker stripes. Then Cherry Door in the uh, black or dark blue and white jacket, followed by Pedro's brief towards the inside. They jump the second and open ditch. Uh, Ligio de Rouge is further back in blue and red and Double Dizzy in the bright lighter blue jacket is in the rear. Kenzo is really flying along down the back straight. Clear of Mandingo Chief and then Free Gift. Cherry Door, Pedro's brief towards the inside. Wide is Cal Duas. Another open ditch. Oh, the leader stood off. Well, too far away really. Only just scraped across the birch there, Kenzo just got to the other side wouldn't want to be doing that in a circus time when the legs are not quite so fresh kenzo clear about eight lengths clear of mandingo chief the next is a, a downhill fence on the side of the course kenzo comes to it ears pricked measures this one much better but excellent jump from mandingo chief in second free gift is back in third cal Duas towards the outside under liam hurd 
uh, back on the inside, Pedro's brief. Uh, now the mount of Robert Thornton in the yellow jacket, about fourth at the moment, Pedro's brief. And further back, Cherry Door from Ligio de Rouge and Double Dizzy. On towards fences six, seven, and eight in the home straight with still well over a circuit to go. And it's the flamboyant Kenzo that continues to make it. From Mandingo Chief and Free Gift to the right. On to the middle of the three up, the home straight. Kenzo safely, Mandingo Chief, Free Gift. Away to the extreme right is Cal Duas. Well in touch. Far side, Pedro's brief about fifth now. Leader put in a beautiful jump there, Kenzo. A crowd-pleasing jump in front of the stands. Kenzo by a couple of lengths or so to free gift. Mandingo Chief is third. Cal Duas is fourth. Pedro's brief, Cherry Door, Double Dizzy, and Ligio de Rouge. So they turn away right-handed now and head along the side of the course towards the water jump. And then they'll have completed a lap of the track. And Kenzo continues to make it here, shouldering top weight, less Charlie Studs, five pounds allowance. Kenzo, Mandingo, Chief Free Gift. Pedro's brief up the inside. Cal Duas is wider. Now with the line of four fences down the back to be crossed once again. Kenzo by a couple of lengths. Mandingo, Chief on the near side of Free Gift, wide in the stripes. And it's Cal Duas as they clear this one. Cal Duas just a bit slow there. Uh, Cherry Door, Double Dizzy, Ligio de Rouge and Pedro's brief on the inside on the left in the yellow jacket an open ditch now kenzo draws to it over safely oh a blunder from pedro's pedro's brief there that hasn't helped his chance a little reminder for mandingo chief on now to fence number 12 this is six out kenzo continues to make hay here little mistake from free gift this time who dragged his hind legs through that fence and now they return to the open ditch where kenzo took a, a bit of a chance on the first circuit this time absolutely spot on kenzo continues to make it cal Duas now into second place though for champion trader paul nichols liam hurd riding then pedro's brief in third recovering after that earlier mistake as they turn right-handed now and head towards the downhill fence once again mandingo chief is fourth double dizzy under the whip as they head towards four out kenzo shadowed by cal Duas. kenzo a fluent jump again uh, maybe took a half length out of cal Duas in second place uh, then pedro's brief who's clinging on is still in contention gets a good run round the inside there does robert thornton who drives pedro's brief along as now they stretch towards the final three fences kenzo still going great guns both cal Duas and pedro's brief are trying to get to this leader uh, much will depend on the jumping the others are well beaten off double dizzy back in fourth and Ligio de rouge and this now is the third last kenzo very quickly to the other side again cal Duas appears to have cracked and it's pedro's brief who's left to chase this leader here's the second loss and Kenzo over again in front and he looks as though he's got them cooked here Pedro's brief now four five lengths away approaching the final fence Kenzo draws towards it one more jump will surely suffice and now the run in a flat run in Charlie Studd looks around for dangers and with one blemish this has been a tremendous display of front running and jumping Kenzo ease down to win in second Pedro's brief a long way clear of a weary Cal Duas, double dizzy, just holds on for fourth. Well, that was a superb front-running ride by Charlie Studd on the 10-year-old Kenzo. Frank, you were saying he hasn't run for a long time, but the trainer is absolutely red-hot at the moment. Yeah, Nick, his horses are in really good form, and uh, Charlie Studd gets on well with him. He's ridden him quite a few times now, and they uh, ran at Aintree in May last time. We saw him, but this horse will be going for the top of him now. Loves jumping. And that one fence down the far side where uh, Simon said we just um, probably just stood off just too far. He just can't get to the fences quick enough. As a jockey, this is a horse you look forward to riding. And, you know, you, you might have, you know, half a dozen moderate uh, rides throughout the week. And you ride something like this, just gives you a bit of confidence and you just suddenly realise what scope horses have got. But he never missed a beat throughout the two mile six of this and there were some good competitive horses running here the horse that finished second to him Pedro's brief probably as good as Kenzo but just doesn't jump as well just not in love with it like this horse and uh, he's a he's a real star in the stable
Well, no Mac today, but uh, we've got able substitutes. Tom and Tanya there in the betting ring this afternoon, and uh, they'll keep us up to date with the result here. Well, the result, result here, John, was a good win, more so for the on-course bookmakers than the off-course. It was heavily back through the morning, Kenzo the third, but on-course it wasn't. It drifted out for an SP of 11-2, to two. another huge drifter in second of Pedro's Beef out to 10-1, to one, and Tom will be very happy with that run. And third was Calduas, the favourite, 11-4. to four. Tom, any news that race? Please, with Pedro's Beef, of course, your father trains it. Tremendous run. Yeah, he just needs to sharpen up his jumping. He's a magnificent horse. He's got a lot of potential and not too many miles on the clock, Pedro's brief. So he's a horse worth following because at 10 years old, he's probably got about the miles on the clock of a six-year-old. However, unfortunately seen off today by Kenzo III, who did jump certainly better. He was well back this morning. He drifted out later on. Pedro's brief, very, very weak. Kenzo III, the winner. I tell you what, this horse, this horse walks faster than I could run. Charlie, that was a great ride. How'd he go? Yeah, very pleased with him. Obviously, his first run back after a bit of a layoff. Yeah. Um, hopefully, I'll put him spot on for the top one, which is the aim for the, the season. He is a bit delicate. Um, so, you just have to go race by race and, and see how he comes out of this. Well, he's certainly he's a good run. He did make that one bad mistake. Yeah, he's just a little bit rusty first run for a while. You know, he's, uh, he's got plenty of scope and, and a lovely horse, and hopefully, go on from here. Well, it's lovely to come back into the number one spot. The Cheers are ringing out. Nicky Henderson, 14th winner of the season, 14th winner in the last two weeks for him. So well done. Lovely horse, now goes for the top of him. Lovely, yeah. Well, the sun is shining here at, uh, at Wind Canton as he comes back. I wonder if Nicky Henderson's going to send out Amaretto Rose to win the Kingwell Patton Hurdle. That's our big hurdle race today. But what's it like at Utoxeter? Stuart, is the sun shining there as well? Hello Derek, good afternoon everyone. I'm delighted to say the sun is indeed shining at Utoxeter. It is the most gorgeous sunny winter's afternoon, but anxious moments this morning and if you're watching with us on the morning line you'll know it got pretty cold here overnight. It reached a low of minus six in the small hours. It was still minus 4.5 at around about 7.30 this morning, but after the sun rose the temperature picked up quickly and racing finally got the green light just before midday. And we have two races live for you from the Staffordshire venue this afternoon starting in a few moments time with a tote scoop six handicap hurdle and the possibility that Nicky Henderson could have a quick fire across the card double because he's represented by the mayor trompette who's one of ten to go to post in this two mile contest in ground that is described as good to soft good in places and also a few soft patches up the home straight so runners out on the track for this upcoming handicap hurdle and Paul Nichols is super foreman heads the market at nine to four Paul narrowly denied in our opening race uh, filled the runner-up spot behind a John Spearing train winner and John represented here by the eight to one chance Magruder's cross Moonstar who was a winner at Hereford on Sundays and at four to one trompet for Nicky Henderson at 13 to two and there's money for Richard Leeds Cottingham who is a previous course winner seven to one uh, from nine to one eight to one then Magruder's cross and ten to one from 14 to 1, Wizard of Us, whose three previous successes over hurdles have all come here at Utoxeter, including this race 12 months ago. Immediate reaction from Kicking King's run bookmaker wise is his, he's been knocked out to 33 to 1 with the sponsor, the Tote for the Tote Cheltenham Gold Cup. Movers today, though, more importantly, it's a mammoth crowd here at Wincanton, packed, packed betting ring in the 240. Arturio, best backed horse of the day for me, 8 to 11 from 5 to 6. That was offered by Coral. Portland Bill may have been unlucky when he fell behind Arturio, 9 to 1 from 12 to 1 VC bet. In the Kingwell Hurdle, Blythe Knight, money for that with Stan James and VC Bet, 7 to 2 from 9 to 2. William Hills report money for Amaretto Rose for the champion hurdle, 20s in from 25. And in the 450, not on air, Merry Music, 7 to 2 from 9 to 2. Tom, on those exchanges, what have we got? Yeah, certainly a few interesting movers here this afternoon. In this race upcoming here at Wincanton, Portland Bill, Tony's just mentioned that, that's been going on the exchanges as well at each way prices. 11 and 12 to 1 now. Artorio also, that's easily the best back horse of the day here at Wincanton. 4 to 5, very solid at the price. Uh, Ships Hill, number 4 in that race, very weak. The 310, Mon Moam and Naunton Brook. Mon Moam, marginally the, uh, the stronger of that pair. Neptune and Collange, they're fielding against that. Out to around about 5 to 4 because of the support for the two we just mentioned. 340, the, uh, the Kingwell hurdle. That's the feature race here. Blythe Knight, quite a gamble going on there. 100 to 30 now only. That was 11 to 2 earlier today. 
also catch it pretty strong, drifting out towards evens, but nonetheless the weight of money suggests that is positive. Still about 10 to 11 shot. Amaretto Rosa, 340 day layoff, 7 to 2, pretty weak. And at Haydock this afternoon, we've got a race for you there. Number 5, Mr Potter. That's an interesting each way market mover at 7 to 1. And just for men, the favourite, 11 to 4 from 100 to 30. Back here at New Toxa to run us at the post for this Tote Scoop 6 handicap hurdle. Field of 10 for a competitive race and Super Foreman just easing a fraction out to 5 to 2. Moonstar, the recent Hereford winner, is fairly solid at 7 to 2. 13 to 2, Nicky Henderson's mayor, Trompet, 7 to 1, Cottingham. Magruder's Cross, who was a wide margin winner at Catrick on his first start for John Spearing, is at 8 to 1. And it's 10 to 1, bar those. And there's been money for Smoothly Does It. And I'm not entirely surprised because 20 to 1 was a little bit too big for the Richard. Fahi train gelding who hasn't run over hurdles since January of last year but he has had a couple of recent spins on the all weather he's a 14 to 1 shot from 20 to 1 um, he's owned by some pretty shrewd judges in the Ipso Facto syndicate as well and one or two of them are here to see him run this afternoon no surprise to see him attracting each way support at big prices it's a tough race Moonstar ran a really good race and won decisively at Hereford uh, last Sunday picks up a six pound penalty for that success and this might be just more of a test of stamina than the Hereford contest was and Nicky Henderson as we've said represented by uh, Trompette, a mare who's got more than enough ability to win this race but she has fallen in two of her last four starts over hurdles. Comes back in grade having run a decent race at Doncaster last time. Don't think it's going to be too long here as it starts is asking them to take one more turn before they make a line for our first live race on Channel 4 from Utoxeter. Our big race of course to you off at 3.50. In the commentary box Graham Good. A line oh, they're off over two miles and in the early exchanges through on the inside we got Magruder's cross up with the pace and so to smoothly does it pulling quite hard in the black and white colours white on the course is St Matthew and up with the pace is Glinton as they take the first over which Magruder's cross was safe and the course specialist Wizard of Us just nodded on landing so coming down towards flight number two an enthusiastic Magruder's cross takes them along by a couple of lengths the red sleeves of Glinton showing in third then running in, in second, I should say, running in third is Cottingham, the yellow jacket to Wizard of Us, and ended by Super Foreman, who's midfield. St Matthew is wide on the park, and after these comes Smoothly Does It, the heavy ground winner last year. And then behind these comes Trompet, quickly down towards flight number three, over which there was little change amongst the leaders. At the rear of the field, kick ahead was a little bit awkward on landing, and they come down towards flight number four. Magruder's Cross and Glinton share the work here and absolutely stride for stride to Moonstar who's just starting to pick up in the purple and white with Wizard of Us and after that one comes Cottingham attended by Super Foreman the favourite in the pink jacket there at the tail end of the main group the orange colours out wide St Matthew a gap of two or three lengths into Trompet who's three or four in front of kick ahead and a circuit to go in the Toad Scoop 6 handicap hurdle vying for the lead the Catrick winner Magruder's Cross goes into the lead now to Glinton in second and a group of six for sharing third, fourth and fifth places with possibly just kick ahead nosing through the inside of Wizard of Us then four across the track with Smoothly Does It, Super Foreman uh, wide in orange and Matthew and the yellow of Cottingham show to advantage over Trompet and kick ahead levelling up down the back stretch no change, it's Magruder's Cross, the ten year old to join still by Glinton, one and two the other's getting a little bit closer now, shake of the reins there for St Matthew but uh, Moonstar in the purple and white getting closer now. Wizard of Us smoothly does it, living up to his name, making a good eye-catching progress on the inside there. With Super Foreman, the pink colours, to on the outside St Matthew. And they're well past halfway, climbing then towards the next flight of hurdles. And Magruder's Cross kicked into it. What a good jump by the hurdler. Takes the advantage to, in second place, Moonstar, the Hereford winner on the inside, then Wizard of Us and Glinton to Super Foreman and uh, smoothly does it, still making ground, Cottingham under pressure now and at one stage looking remote, Trompet for the Henderson team gets into this now Black Cap for the Elite Racing Club and really hurdled fluently there St Matthews just starts to drop away, kick ahead has never got into it and Cottingham pops out the back, but it's going to be Magruder's Cross with the advantage here to Moonstar in second and then smoothly does it into sharing third with the pink jacket Super Foreman 
going on to Trompet, and then behind these, Wizard of Us, Wizard of Us to kick ahead to Clinton and St. Matthew. And so the order, as they start the run in, they've got three more flights of hurdles to jump. In the green, it's Magruder's Cross, but on the right, with Horse with a Noseband, smoothly does it. On the left, in purple and white, Moonstar. Then Trompet still closing. Here we are, three out, and little to choose between those two. Then behind these comes Super Foreman, who's trying to make ground. Cottingham is being pulled up, two to jump. On the right, smoothly does it with this eye-catching run to Moonstar, who smoothly does it. To Moonstar, move well in the market, smoothly does it. Coming home for the Ipso Facto Syndicate with wind one to jump on a tight rein. He's spread eagling a field, fit horse in second. Moonstar, good horse in third, super foreman over the last and smoothly does it. Living up to his name, shaken up, had wheel and looked round. And it's going to be one for the Ipso Facto Syndicate here, up towards the line, drawing well clear. Smoothly does it, rubs away with this Toad Scoop 6 handicap hurdle. Pushed out of the line, lands a gamble. Second home is Moonstar, and they're well clear of some Matthew, who rallied well for third, Super Foreman in fourth. Well, it was a case of smoothly does it, wasn't it, for the Richard Fahey trained seven-year-old in the hands of Patch Whelan. And he's landed some tidy bets here, 20 to 1, down to 14 to 1, just before the off in the colours of the Ipso Facto Syndicate. A number of them were here this afternoon to see him run. And uh, fit from a couple of recent spins on the all-weather, travel well throughout in a strongly run race. And in truth, from early in the straight, the result was a little doubt. Uh, Moonstar, under the £6 penalty for last weekend's Hereford win, has tried valiantly and has given chase over the last couple of flights, pulling well clear of the third, but no match for Smoothly Dudley. And old St Matthew, better known as a chaser these days, has stayed on to take a remote third, and he might be just of some interest in a small handicap chase over a little bit further in the coming weeks. Back here, back here at Wincanton in the betting ring, pretty subdued at the moment, and that's allowed the bookmakers to be a bit brazen here. 8 to 11, Arturio opened up on course. It's now 10 to 11, you can see in a few places, generally 5 to 6, but that could turn out to be a huge price for Arturio. Coming in against Arturio's National Trust at around 15 to 2, now into 7. Portland Bill at 10 to 1. Valiant Shadow, bit of each way money for that at 16. Tom, anything to add from the exchanges? Yeah, this, uh, this Arturio, he boasts wins at uh, Nantes, Jalais and Cheltenham <laughs> to his name already this season. And if you and if you read the champion trainer Paul Nichols' column in today's Racing Post, that's certainly a big signpost. He says it's his best bet of the day. Just drifting out very slightly. He's 10 to 11 from 4 to 5, but he's bullying the market here, really. All the weight of money on the exchanges. Little nibbles each way for National Trust at 8 to 1. And Portland Bill, we mentioned in the movers. But it's a one-horse book, Arturio. And back here at Utoxeter, smoothly does it in the hands of Padge Whelan, running out an impressive winner of our Tote Scoop 6 handicap hurdle. Returned at 12 to 1. He was back from down as big as 20s in the ring just before the off. Moonstar at 100 to 30 was second at 28 to 1. St Matthew back in third. And back here at Wincanton, the presentation for our Bathwick Tyres Taunton Handicap Chase. Of course, Kenzo was the winner. And the owner is John Studd, who's the father, or the sire, of the winning jockey, Charlie Studd. It's a great name, and he's giving a big kiss to Sarah Clifford, the director of Bathwick Tyres, who sponsor today's racing. Great supporters, they sponsor uh, David Pipe's stable as well. They love their racing. Well done to them. Plenty still to come. And the Bathwick Tyres Yeovil Handicap is next. Dubai Holding, proud to sponsor Channel 4 Racing.